Hello and welcome. Today we'll see the essential techniques for edge-to-edge -edge quilting on a long arm machine with a whole cloth pantograph. Linda Jenkins and Becky Goldsmith show their beautiful quilts and tell us why they use long arm quilters to complete some of them. If you're thinking about running a quilting business yourself, I'll tell you what you need to get started. So stay tuned. Linda's long arm quilting is made possible by Gamel Quilting Machine Company bringing quality, innovation, and service to quilters around the world for over a quarter of a century. By YLI, making decorative threads that help you unleash your imagination. By Statler Stitcher, providing automation to enhance and expand your long arm quilting business. And by Hobbs Bonded Fibers, We're going to stitch a whole cloth pantograph and talk about how to start a long arm quilting business. But first I want to share an interesting discussion I had at the International Quilt Festival in Houston, Texas. Hi, we're here at the International Quilt Market, and today we're visiting with Linda Jenkins and Becky Goldsmith of Piece of Cake Designs. Welcome, Becky and Linda. Oh, we're so happy to be here. Yes, we are. It's very exciting. Becky and Linda were some of my customers when I first started, and so we're going to look at some of those quilts and visit with them about their business a little bit. Let's talk about you as partners. How did you meet and become partners together? We met at the Green Country Quilters Guild. We were both members and very active on the board and we became friends. And over the years, we got closer and when Linda moved to Colorado and my husband moved us to Texas, that's when we became partners. After you moved away from each yeah, other. Yes. That's exciting. Is that why you've become, you've stayed partners all these years? You're far apart? <laughs> Actually, we think it's true. You and I killed each other otherwise. So you do a lot of communicating by phone and Phone like and that. email, fax. So you work yeah. out of your homes. Yes, we work both do. Work out of your homes. You don't have a store. No but you've been very creative in your pattern designing and your books and everything. I'm just, um, congratulations on all of your success. Thank you. Well, thank you, Linda. That's a high compliment <laughs> for me. That's great. You know, it's um, always interesting because I know you both do your own quilting on machines and some by hand even, yes. and um, yet you have you sought me out as a long arm quilter, and so that's kind of an interesting phenomenon. Why did you, why did you feel like you needed to have other quilters? At some point, when you have as much production as we do, you have to give something up and, and learn to share the artistic creativity. And um, we were so happy to find you <laughs> because we can trust you. I think that trust is probably a big part of the long arm quilting world. Yes, um, it is. When people like you or others find somebody that they can really trust with their quilt and feel good about that completed project. Let's take a look at some of the quilts and kind of, you can see a little bit of graduation from um, the first quilting that I did to the, to the final quilting and some of your earlier works as well. Right, right. Let's talk about this first one. Becky, do you want to tell us about this Santa quilt? Yes, the Santa quilt is based on a 1950s design. It's, uh, it's actually a quilt that Linda wanted to make and did, um, that was really her quilt. Mm -hmm. Um, we really liked what you did in the backgrounds around the Santa Clauses, mm -hmm. 
the, each Santa is sitting or standing in a room, mm -hmm. and so there's usually a wall behind and floor below. And the different treatments you used in the different blocks, suggesting wind or air, say, around the rocket Santa, or... That's always a challenge as a quilter to come up with different ideas and a lot of pressure for for um, the long arm quilters to, to imagine what that piecer wants on there and to make it come alive. Exactly. So I'm so glad you like that. And that is such a darling quilt. Yes, it is. And the next one is called, Linda, do you want to tell us about that sure. one? Sure. That's Flaring Favorites. And it was, it was one of the early ones that you did for us. And at that time, um, you know, we knew your reputation, but you hadn't <laughs> actually done something for us. So, uh, we sent specific instructions and even the thread, I believe, yes, you did. for that. <laughs> and uh, in the time period of it being quilted and seeing the results and then seeing other works that you've done, our, confi you know, our confidence in you was just like, oh, she's so creative. <laughs> Why did we do this? <laughs> Well, I feel that confidence from you. Oh, yeah. And that quilt was really um, a fun one for me because it had those wonderful vines and flowers in it. And so I was able to do some echoing and, and other um, leaf, de leaf design. Yes, and the flowers too. And um, as a long arm quilter, it's important um, to ask people like, you, like yourselves who do a lot of applique, if it's okay for us to quilt on the applique. And, and if we don't, you it's know. very important to quilt inside the applique. It is, and, and for people to give permission to the quilter to do that, oh, they yes. trust them to, to yeah. do that, so the leaves get... And inside the flowers, it's very important because if you heavily quilt the background and you don't put any quilting in the applique, it, uh, the applique can sag and bag and be unattractive. Right, so when it's hanging up, it just doesn't look right. 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 And the last quilt, Linda, do you want to tell us about the last well, one? Well, the last I... quilt is Scrap Bag Surprise, and it's a queen size quilt, and my deadline was looming, and I called you with a whine in my voice. <laughs> and we I need said, a lot of Linda, whiners. <laughs> is there any way, because I knew how busy you were, is there any way that you could quilt this for us? And that's one that, um, one of many that we sent off with no instructions at all, said do what you do because we love what you do and we knew you'd be very creative and think of some things that I might not have. Mm -hmm. So, What was your favorite part on that quilt? Uh, I really love the circle quilting that, that you did in it and I've shown it several times at guilds when I've gone to teach mm -hmm. and that's the thing people come up asking you about. They'll go, Linda, how did you do those perfect circles? And I go, it wasn't me, it was Linda Taylor that did those. <laughs> and I'll be showing the viewers how I, how I achieved that, because it's not a hard thing to do on the, on the long arm machines, believe it or not, it's pretty easy to do. But that was a joy to work with, and it's just been wonderful to have you, both of you here today, and to share the information that you have with us. I appreciate that very much. Well, we appreciate being happy here. to be here, it's great. Yeah. It's great, thanks. It's excellent. Hello there, I am so excited to tell you all the things about a long arm machine, all the wonderful things that you can do. But today we're going to concentrate on the very first thing that you'll learn as you begin learning to work with a long arm machine, and that's working with a pantograph design. We're going to be following the pantograph with our laser light from behind the machine. Pantographs are all over patterns, they're also called 
um, overall patterns or pantographs or edge to edge patterns. They go from the very edge of the pattern of the quilt to the other side of the quilt, regardless of the design work. The one that we're going to work with today, however, is a whole cloth pantograph. And that can be placed in the middle of the quilt, or you can actually do the entire quilt with that pantograph. Now, the one that we're working with is a ballerina, and it has three parts to the pattern because you can't do the whole quilt on the machine at the same time. You have to actually advance the quilt as you're quilting it. So the first thing that I have done on this one is I've done already the little ballerina shoes and the ribbons and the flowers, and that's underneath here. So I've rolled it to the middle part. And then we'll do the ballerina, and that's what we're going to stitch right now. This is the ballerina pattern, and on the quilt, I have marked the middle of the quilt. I've put a pin here and a pin here. Now I'm going to bring my machine over like this, and I'm going to put it on the pin. I'm going to turn on my laser light, and I can actually focus my laser light right to the center of my pattern, to the middle of her head here, at the top of her hair, to make sure I'm lined up here, and I'll check to make sure that her arms are all going to be on here. There we go. And then I'll come down to the other side, and line that up with my pin, and you can see that I can get right there in the center of her. Then I can take my pins out. There we go. Now, when you're following a pantograph, you want to be very relaxed. I have a start place right here, and I will go down and bring up my thread, and I'm going to need to take five little stitches in a row, and I just push this button here, and I advance the quilt, the machine just a little bit, the needle, and that took some tiny little stitches in a row, and I'll just get rid of that thread there, and then I'm ready to start. And I'm going to do this one in the regulated mode, so I'm using about ten stitches to the inch. Now when I start the machine, I want you to notice that I use a very light touch. And when you're in the regulated mode, your machine will speed up and slow down. See if I need to slow down in those points? I can. Also on a pantograph, if you don't stay exactly on the line, you don't need to worry too much. You're going to be very close to that line. And as you get better and better, your accuracy will improve. You stand up straight. You have to have good posture. And you don't worry too much about staying exactly on the lines. Now, there are some colored places in the intersections on this pattern to help me get through those intersections and stay on the right line. Because when lines cross, you might get mixed up and go on the wrong line. So, those red lines help me stay straight. Look at this, we can do the entire ballerina with one continuous line. Then we can go back in and put details on almost finished. Up to her arm. These are so fun. Children love these on their beds. And if you want to put a lot of quilting on them, you can go back and stipple around the design. Her neck. If it looks fun, that's because it is fun. Getting her hair done here. And a little hair up on top. You see how I go into those points? Just sort of a point, 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 point. You have to pause just slightly so that you make a nice sharp point when you're going into points. 
and there's my stopping point. And then I can turn the machine off. You can see she doesn't have her face. Now, I could do some of that from behind if I wanted to. In fact, without even uh, cutting that thread, I can bring my needle up. I can come over here, just do a couple little stitches there and come across. There's her eyebrow. And to do her little eyelash, I'll go across here like this and then down and up following this pantograph. So we've completed the eyebrow and the eye and the eyelashes on from the back following the pattern. Now I want to show you how you can use your freehand skills if you would like to complete the other eye and eyebrow. So we're going to walk around to the front of the machine. Because you can quilt from both sides of the machine. I'm going to bring my needle up. I'll come over here and again I'll start that eyebrow. In fact I'm going to make it a little bit heavier. See, when you, you have that prerogative when you're on the front of the machine. And here's our eyelash. And I can see through this foot, so it's really easy for me to see exactly what I'm doing. There we go. And the little mouth. Put a nice little smile on her. And I think, you know, this hair is pretty curly. You can see that there's some curls there. So let's just go in here and put some more curls. And I'm thinking of half circles and swirls. So I go in a half swir uh, swirl, half circle, half circle. Just some little swirls to make this hair look like it's curly. Like that, I'll come down over here. I want to end up at the top, so I sort of have a plan in mind so that I can get up here in the top and then up here I'm going to do her hair like this. Just to give her a little bit more personality. And you could decorate her little tutu or you could do anything like that that you wanted to do. Now the flowers on the side. I went down and brought up my bobbin thread, and I didn't explain that very well, so I will this next time. But I'm going to complete some more of these little flowers. And these just have loops, you know, loops are pretty easy to do. So let's come out of this little flower, make a loop, make a loop. And there's the center of our flower, and now we'll just make some petals around it. Real easy flower. Maybe we want to come out with a little leaf, put a little stem in the leaf, continue our flower, another little leaf, easy to do, put a little stem inside of it, and then in the middle of this flower, I just want to bring a little bit more of this bright pink out, so I'll just touch that up like that, and then I would continue with my loops and continue to do flowers to fill in between that border and this border and do the same thing at the bottom. Now I also have on this quilt a little sashing area, little tiny border here. So I want to show you what I would do in there. Another easy thing which is just these little swirls here. To continue that theme of what we have going on, I would just do these little swirls out here like that. Just down and around. I go to that side, around and in, point, and then back out. Around, like that, and point, and back out. Trying to make each one of them look the same so it looks like I followed a pattern, but I haven't at all. Just all freehand. Now, out in the outer border, you could do anything that you wanted to. You could continue your flowers and your loops and make them bigger. But because this is a print, you're not going to see a lot of the quilting that's out here. So I think what I would do is probably something that is, I'm going to go into my manual mode now, something that the texture will show. So I'm going to do half circles from this side to this side and back like this. And the texture of this is really going to stand out on this quilt. When I quilt, I really want my quilting to show. I don't, I don't want to do all this effort for nothing. When I get in the middle of this, again, I'm going to do a big swirl, just like the other swirls that I've been doing, like that. 
almost like a pinwheel, and then I'll reverse those half circles. But notice how I tuck it in. Tuck it in. Keeping them all about even. Now because I'm using sort of the same color of thread, um, when this is hanging up on the wall or on the bed, all you'll see are these um, wonderful little crescent designs with the circle here because it's such a busy print. So doing a pantograph is not hard. Tracing from behind the machine, you just lightly do not grip that machine, but very lightly hold on and it's just a matter of following that laser light around. And then you can come to the front and do all kinds of wonderful things on the front to enhance it. Whatever comes to your mind. If nothing comes to your mind, that's okay too because the pattern is already there. On this one, I think I would take a light pink um, thread now and do a stipple design around it to, to really raise the ballerina up. But I wouldn't do it with the same color, the, the uh, hot pink thread, because that would distract from the ballerina. So I hope you enjoyed the project today. <laughs>
Linda's Long Arm Quilting is made possible by Gamel Quilting Machine Company, bringing quality, innovation, and service to quilters around the world for over a quarter of a century. By YLI, making decorative threads that help you unleash your imagination. By Statler Stitcher, providing automation to enhance and expand your long arm quilting business. And by Hobbs Bonded Fibers, 